Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using OpenGL with C Sharp. I will use the library OpenTK, which is a C Sharp binding for OpenGL and it includes a math library, a windowing system and input handling. Their website has a learning page, which is a C Sharp translation of the first two chapters of learnopengl.com and also a list of many useful resources you can use to learn it. So let's get started. Create a C Sharp project and make sure it's a concept app. For the .NET Core version, you need to make sure you have either version 3 or 5 installed, as stated on their website. Now let's install the OpenTK library for the NuGet manager. Also make sure you choose the latest stable version of it. Now, create a new c -sharp file. This is where the main functions will be called, like loading, resizing and updating the frames. We also need to include some OpenTK namespaces. We want to base our main class on one of OpenTK's own classes to create our window. So let's do that with a colon like this and write game window. Now let's construct the main class with width, height and title. Now we need to pass some variables to the game window, so we will do that for the function base. We will keep the default game window settings, but create a new instance of the native window settings. You can just copy me here. We will look at these values a bit closer later, and see what they actually do. And now if you want, you can center the window with this little function. Let's now override some game window functions. On resize is called whenever you resize the window or maximize it or unmaximize it. The onload function is called directly after we start the program. And the onRenderFrame frame function is called whenever the frame updates and it can be capped by vsync. Now we can go into the main function and create an instance of the main class with our own settings. If we now call window.run and start the program, we should see a window. But that's pretty boring, so let's add an icon to our window. For that we need a library called stb image sharp, which is very useful for loading images. We also need to include some more namespaces. The image result will store the data from the image, like the width, height and the color channels of it. Now we use a system class called stream, which we can use to load byte arrays from the image. And now we can create a new OpenTK image using the loaded data.
Since we based our main class on game window, we can set the game window icon for this variable. If you run the program now, you should see the icon in the top left and also in the taskbar. Now we can talk about these variables inside the main class. The first one is the window border, and it decides how the border behaves. Resizable means you can resize the window. Fixed means you can't resize it, and you can't even enter full screen. And hidden means there is no border. But if there isn't a border and there's nothing inside the window, then it won't show up because there is nothing to display. To fix this, we can assign a color to be displayed once we clear the color buffer. And this is basically a background color. And then we also need to clear the color buffer. And the last thing we need to do is drop the front and back buffers to display the rendered frame. And if you launch it now, you should see a borderless window with a color. And now, the reason we don't want start visible to be true is that it shows a white non-centered window before we display what we really want to see. So we turn on is visible inside on load instead. That's it for this tutorial, if you learned anything, please consider subscribing, and thank you for watching.